What's up guys? In this video, what I want to solve is four cosine squared of theta minus three equals zero. And I want to do that by showing you guys a quick little tip that I think can really help you when you are solving your trigonometric equations. One thing I notice a lot when students are solving trigonometric equations, they completely forget how to solve equations. A lot of times we get confused with using our trigonometric functions. So this one simple tip that can help you, especially when you're doing problems that are factoring, or even an example like this where you're using inverse operations, is to use substitution. And what I mean by substitution is to go ahead and let our trigonometric metric function represent a variable. So in this example, I can say let cosine of theta equals x. Now we're much more familiar with solving equations with an x, right? So if I replace the cosine of theta with x, I could rewrite this as a 4 x squared minus 3 is equal to 0. Because it's really important for you to recognize, even though I wrote cosine squared of theta, remember that is the same thing as like a cosine of theta quantity squared minus 3 equals 0. Now in this case, when we want to solve for x, remember we're just going to be using our inverse operations, right? We want to undo everything that's happening to our variable. But we got to undo everything in terms of our reverse order of operations. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to undo, subtract, by 3 by adding a 3 on both sides. Then we have a 4x squared is equal to a 3. Then we're going to undo multiplication by 4 by dividing a 4 on both sides. And therefore, I'm left with a x squared is equal to a 3 fourths. Now, to get rid of the square, I'm going to take the square root of both sides. Now, remember, using the rules of radicals, we can go ahead and break this up into a square root of 3 over a square root of 4. Now, it's also important to remember whenever we introduce the square root, you have to include your plus or minus. And then to take the square root of 3 or 4. Now, remember, it's really important when we introduce the square root that we're going to include the plus or minus. And now I can distribute the square root using my rules of radicals to be a square root of three over a square root of four, which I can easily just simplify that to a two. So therefore I have a final answer of X equals a plus or minus a square root of three over two. Now, the cool thing is here is if I am solving this equation and I already let substitution say, let cosine of theta equals X. Well, now I can substitute back in my cosine of theta. So therefore now I can just say cosine of theta is equal to plus or minus the square root of three over two. Now you don't need to use this trick. You could easily just solve from here. But a lot of times when students get stuck, this is exactly what I recommend them to do to make sure that they algebraically don't make any mistakes mistakes. And in the end, guys, it really just comes down to practicing. The more practice you have solving your trigonometric equations, the more familiar you're going to be with solving with our sines, our cosines, and tangent. Now, the next thing we want to be careful of is when we are solving it for a variable, that was it, right? That was our answer. But when we're solving our trigonometric equations, we have not isolated our theta yet, right? We just have a cosine of theta is equal to plus or minus square root of three or two. Our variable in this case is going to be theta. So it's really important to understand that your job is not done. Right In algebra class, we finished the job. But in trigonometry, we still need to solve for theta. And again, remember the theta is inside of our trigonometric function. Right, The way that we say this is cosine of theta equals square root of 3 over 2. So to find this missing angle, there's a couple ways we can do this. I always like to start with the unit circle because if we want to find the solutions on an interval of 0 to 2 pi, the unit circle makes the most amount of sense to, to begin with. So here's the unit circle, and we can kind of go from 0 to 2 pi. So again, if my solution is restricted here from 0 to 2 pi, then I can go ahead and just stick with the unit circle. Now, again, when I say the cosine of an angle, right, in this case, theta equals plus or minus square root of three over two, it's important to remember our definition for our trigonometric functions when we're dealing with points that are on the unit circle. The cosine of an angle represents the X coordinate of that point on the unit circle. So what I want to look for is on the unit circle. And again, this is helpful to kind of recognize where these points would be on the unit circle to be able to solve this equation. Obviously, you don't want to be that student that knows how to do it, but then forgets your unit circle. You don't want to be that student, right? Right. So assuming that you know your points on the unit circle, in reality, the way that I teach the unit circle, I really just want you to know the first quadrant. And this first quadrant, this point here where the x coordinate is going to be a square root of three or two is going to be right here. And the reason why I really just want students to understand this point here in the first quadrant is because now you can basically just reflect this to the other quadrants, right? You can reflect about the x, the y, and the origin. So as long as you know what this angle is, right? And in this case, it's going to be a pi over six. Then what you recognize is all of these angles are exactly the same. These are what we call our reference angle. So if this is pi over six, halfway around the circle is pi, or if we're dealing with six, we could also call that a six pi over six, right? So if I'm pi over six short of six pi over six, then we could say that angle is going to be a five pi over six. And if I'm pi over six over six pi over six, then we can call that angle a seven pi over six. And if we're in terms of six, we know that two pi is the same thing as a 12 pi over six. But if I'm pi over six short of 12 pi over six, then we know that angle is going to be 11 pi over six. So again, whenever we're dealing with solutions that are restricted between zero and two pi, it's easiest just to find the solutions on the unit circle. So in this example, using set notation, I can just list my solutions. All right, you guys ready for another tip? So what about when 
one, you need to find all of the solutions. So the easiest way to find all the solutions is to take each one of your answers and add two pi n. Because as long as you keep on adding two pi, you're gonna go back to the original equation. So let me kind of show you how that works. If I have my original equation here, pi over six, right? If I add two pi, look where it ends. It ends at the exact same angle of pi over six. Now actually that angle is going to be a 13 pi over six. But again, the cosine of pi over six is equal to the cosine of 13 pi over six. Why are they equal? Because again, they land on the same angle, which is intersecting with the unit circle at a square root of three comma two. And the same thing works for subtraction, right? If I had pi over six and I subtract a two pi, well, guess what? Again, a two pi is just going all the way around the circle, but it's going to start and end at the same spot. That's what we call our coterminal angles. Since we can continuously add two pi infinite many times or subtract two pi infinite many times, we want to use n to represent any integer. However, what I want you to do is go back and look at the solution on the unit circle. Because a lot of times when students just have to find all the solutions, which would be like on the interval from negative infinity to infinity, they just kind of jump into finding the solutions and then adding two pi n. That's not always going to be best. What I would recommend doing is drawing these angles so that you see them, but then also recognize the symmetry here. If I take this, you can see how these two angles are exactly halfway around a circle from each other. The same thing goes for these two angles. These two angles are exactly halfway around each other. And the reason why that's important is because halfway around a circle is pi. So if I keep on adding pi, that's just gonna bounce between those two angles, right? From here to here is pi, add pi again, here add pi again, goes to here, add pi again, goes here. So the other tip is to look for your symmetry. Sometimes that symmetry is going to be in thirds. Sometimes it will be in halves. Sometimes it will be in quarters. Look for the symmetry when you're trying to find all of the solutions. You can also look at the graphical approach, but in my opinion, just looking at the unit circle, I can kind of identify what even interval do I need to add to one solution to get to the next solution. But it's really important to recognize that there's no even interval between pi over six and five pi over six, right? Because that distance between those two is four pi over six. Well, if I add four pi over six again, that's gonna take me to a nine pi over six, which is not a solution, right? So you gotta see how I connected these with their symmetry. Now, all I simply need to do is take that first answer, which is pi over six, so I can say theta equals a pi over six, and then I can add a pi n. We can add or subtract pi infinite many times, but once I add pi, that takes me to seven pi over six, right? And then if you keep on adding it, you're gonna keep on getting your solutions as well as in the other direction as well. So the other solution, I'm just going to take my five pi over six. So theta equals a five pi over six, and then I'm going to continue adding a pi n. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Those are two little tips you can use when you're solving your trigonometric equations. I hope that was helpful for you. If you're looking for more examples or resources on solving trigonometric equations, go and check out the examples I have for you down below or check out the next video I have for you here.